just two months ago. Pleasure to be there. Okay. All right. So here we are. Uh, I'm going to give an introduction to uh, using the BioPack um, amplifier. This is an MP36. I like to call it the blue box. It's a four channel physiological amplifier. It has one, two, three, four channels in front, and then this fifth port in the front is very useful for EEG. It's called an electrode checker. Uh, that's the label, um, and you'll use it later on. Okay. Um, but the business end of this procedure are these electrodes. Now these are uh, by Kendall Meditrace. This is the sort of thing you'd see in a hospital. Although last night what I was what I used was something called the 3M Red Dot, which is a good one as well. And uh, it's like 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 a band aid, peel and stick affair. Um, but what you'll see essentially is an adhesive disc. In the center of that disc is a sort of clear jelly. Sometimes it's kind of bluish, what have you. If you smell it, it smells a little antiseptic. And then underneath that, you'll see a little black or dark gray disc, which is made of silver, silver chloride. Uh, think of it like uh, grandma's silver, but all tarnished, which is not too far from what this is. Um, and then uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, I'm sorry, on the back, there's a little metal post, okay? Now, as I said, these are peel and a stick affairs, and the idea here is that uh, once you're done with them, you peel them off and just chuck them. Each one of these costs about 20 cents. And the idea is that um, by doing that, you guard against uh, uh, cross-contamination between subjects. The, there are electrodes which you have to clean and, and sterilize. Um, usually, typically, they're made of gold. Uh, actually, he used some gold contact electrodes on me last night. Um, but these work just fine. So go ahead and stick that. Uh, the back of the hand is a good place to do it. Some are hairless, because of course when you take it off, if there's hair underneath, it'll be like peeling a mandate. And feel how that feels when you put it down on your hand. Go ahead, Aaron. Come on. Don't be shy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's rolling. <laughs> All right. Can you feel that sort of goopy feeling under there? Yep. Okay, that's a good thing. The goopy feeling is, is important and necessary. The goop is an electrode gel. Uh, not electrode, an electrolyte gel. Okay? Think of it like salt water jello would be a good way of thinking about it, although it's not gelatin like you'd eat. Um, it is non-toxic, but most importantly what it does is it, it's a, a semi-liquid state electrical bridge. The idea being that we're interested in electrons that play across the surface of your skin, and we're interested in getting them into a wire which will then go into the amplifier. Okay? We're interested in creating currents. Now, the thing that most people don't really understand about this the first time they encounter electrophysiological equipment is they think that this box is supplying the power to you, the subject's body. And in fact, it's exactly the opposite. Although this box does have a power supply, it's a supply to run the amplifiers. On the other end, the bits that connect to the subject are completely passive, if you will. Okay? Electrons are constantly finding their way to the surface of your skin and then moving laterally, usually. Okay? All we do by putting these electrodes on the surface of your skin is we make it possible for those electrons to leave the surface of your skin and they will go down a wire into the amplifier across a little bridge where they're measured, the amount of flow of electrons, and then back out another wire and back onto your body at another spot. It's all done uh, on the basis of a circuit. Mm. Now, <clears throat> what sort of equipment do we have to deal with here? Well, first of all, of course, the peel and stick electrodes. Um, second of all, we have a few things that we like to work with uh, in EEG specifically. The different kinds of things that you can measure using electrophysiological equipment are, are, are uh, you can measure muscle activity, doing EMG, you can measure movement of the eyes, doing what's called EOG, electrooculography. You can measure the heart electrical signal, that's EKG, or these days more often ECG. And then uh, we also do something pretty frequently called EDA. Um, this is uh, sweat, palm sweat, but we're not going to be talking about that today. But for the most part, the, 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 the contact with the subject is the same. It's a peel and stick electrode, some wires on what are called electrode leads. Now, this is the electrode lead that we use, and it looks different in a lot of ways from the stuff made by other companies. Um, one of the things you need to know, of course, is that 
uh, as equipment that can be used in medicine, and given that medicine is a big business, there are about a million companies that make their own electrode leads, okay? Uh, and the other thing to think, remember about this is because it's, it's medical, uh, it's also gonna cost you about 10 times what it looks like it costs, okay? <laughs> if I looked at this set of wires, I'd think, okay, that's about five bucks worth of wiring. No, this electrode uh, lead set right here is 190 bucks, okay? That said, they last years if you treat them gently, okay? Um, on one end is for the bio pack is this funky looking thing. It looks like an old mouse connector, D sub 9. Oh, it looks like an Atari joystick. Yeah, it looks thing. like an Atari joystick. That's right. And what it will do is it will plug into one of these guys just like that. The other end, of course, there's a little bit of a run here with this gray uh, vinyl uh, soft vinyl cover and then what you get is three leads that are very nicely color-coded for us, okay? One red, one white, and one black. Now this is the part that, that becomes very important to keep straight because getting these on the right spot and uh, avoiding getting them on the wrong spot um, is the difference between getting data that means something and getting complete garbage, okay? Uh, and trust me, having done it myself many times, you'll finish with an hour-long recording session and then realize the whole thing is a waste of time because you didn't put the electrodes on. That'll happen to every one of you at least once. <laughs> so forgive yourself now for doing it. Okay. So what do we have? Well, typically these guys are marked with a little symbol. Okay. Black is, is it the universal color code for an electrical ground, Chris? I don't know, but... This one is marked with a G. Sometimes you'll see a G and D, uh, and that stands for ground. And that's, uh, for those of you familiar with electric circuitry and things like that, that's the term it means. Basically, electrons want to run from source to ground, okay? Plus in the red and minus in the white, okay? This, the red, is going to be placed over your active site. And the white is for your il reference electrode. What those things mean, I'll give you in a minute. But basically, if you're targeting a region of the brain, say I want to target the frontal lobes, which would be, of course, towards the front, I would put my reference electrode up towards the front. Okay? Something like that. Now, how well you can target particular parts of the brain is a bit of a debate, but what the, you'll find is that depending on the kind of work you do, you look at what people have already done and, and look at how they set things up, and you basically just follow their lead, okay? For the purposes of our study, what we're going to be doing, if I understand it correctly, is we are going to be doing right front and right, uh, sorry, front right and front left electrodes. We're interested in activity in the frontal lobes, Okay, and we're interested in the symmetry or asymmetry, if you will, the relative amount of it in certain frequency bands between left and right hemispheres. The idea being that it's the relative amount of this activity that is indicative of changes in mental state that go with various kinds of um, both meditative practice, which is what this study is concerned with, but also with certain uh, uh, pathological or subpath pathological conditions, depression, for example, anxiety, things like that. Okay. Now, each one of these electrodes, I'm sorry, each one of these electrode leads is equipped with like a little lobster claw mechanism. Okay. So what you do is, it's hard to see, but there's a little notch here. And if you squeeze on it like that, you open the lobster claw just a little bit. And when you close it down, on the metal post, it just grabs onto it. Now, if you've done it right, it will grab it hard enough that it won't come off easily, but it'll also sort of rotate around. And that's nice because it allows you to reposition the leads in a way that allows you to get some comfort for your subjects. Okay? Now, we have a few other things to think about. We have spare gel. This is the bluish gel we use. This is called spectra gel. There's another one called 1020 gel, uh, electrode gel or electrode paste, which is uh, made by, I 
forget who makes them, 